Okay, so Gamescom 2019 is fast on the inbound, and we still don't know what we're going to be getting as per every year. It is left up to speculation until the very day they announce what it is. Of course, last year it was helicopters, the year before it was tier 6 being added into the game with ground forces. So what could it be this year? Well, of course, in the last year, even out of Gamescom, we've had big announcements. Usually, the biggest announcement is left until Gamescom but they've given us tier 7 tanks, they've given us tier 6 aircraft with supersonics, which both of which I would have expected would have been a Gamescom worthy announcement. So what could we be getting? Now, I have made a list of what I would call possible options. Some of these are not likely, some of them are fairly likely, some of them I'm kind of undecided on, but all of them are ones that I think could be announced as a possible thing where the Gaijin could come along and say, hey, we've been working on this, here it is. So first off, new tech trees. I think either Sweden or China are the most likely. The Chinese tech tree is already on the Chinese client of the game, and it's mostly copy and paste. It is a copy and paste tech tree. Personally, I see no reason to add this to the main version of War Thunder, but it is a possibility. Sweden, on the other hand, we're going to talk about that in a short while. Another one is submarines, another thing we're going to talk about a bit later on, of course this was the subject of an April Fools event, which in my opinion, despite being made fairly quickly, was a fairly decent event, and the game mode was not too bad. Another one, tier 7 helis, another thing of which we are going to discuss a bit later on in the video. Mac 2 Plus Jets, we will discuss this later, but I don't feel this is very likely, but then again, it is still a possibility. One that has been rumoured for a while is Nintendo Switch compatibility. Guys, you know, I've said a few times recently how they are working on porting the game engine over to the Nintendo Switch to have War Thunder on that console. Another one is new game modes, uh, various things, new heli game modes, maybe a ground forces mode without any close air support, all those kind of things, that's a possibility. Another one, new game engine, you always see people complaining about the graphics, personally, I feel they have improved uh, over the past year, two years, I don't think the graphics are that big of an issue. But then again, another game engine could be a possibility, or just an upgrade, up, a sort of an upgraded, updated version of the current game engine. This is of course a possibility. And finally, another heli tree. Maybe tier 7 for helis right now is a bit ambitious, but we could possibly be seeing a new heli tree, be that Japan, Britain or Italy. Personally, I think Japan is a bit more likely. So now we're going to move on to some things that I personally would like to see at Gamescom 2019. Not necessarily the most likely things, but the things I would like to see. First off, a new nation, Sweden. So today, we're not going to talk about everything, not ground forces, not helis, not boats. We're going to talk about aviation. Why am I doing this? Well, because France and Italy, the last two new nations to be added, started off with aviation before going into other vehicle types. So I'm going to make the assumption that Sweden, when they eventually get added, will also be joining with just aviation. So Sweden, of course, does have a large variety of interesting designs, and some of them I have already focused on in a previous video all about what aircraft Sweden could get, all the way from tier 1 up to tier 5. That video was before tier 6 aviation was added into the game, so, you know, I didn't mention any supersonics. But now that tier 6 aviation has been added, we're going to talk about some things that could fit the current meta, or maybe even the future meta, of high tier jet combat. So first off, the Saab 32 Lance, and this would fit the current meta very nicely, very comparable to the Hunter F6 and the F86K, top speed of 1200 kilometers per hour, or 745 miles per hour, and a climb rate of 100 meters per second, which certainly isn't too bad, not the best in the game by far, but again, certainly not too bad. Main armament, uh, the fixed armament that is, is four 30mm Aiden cannons with 90 rounds per gun, same guns that we have seen on both variants of the Hawker Hunter. We know that they're pretty good, using the correct rounds you can bust open like pillboxes, very good multi-role guns. Then, on four pylons on the wings, you can either mount four RB-24 air-to-air missiles, these are literally Swedish license built sidewinders, or four 75mm air-to-ground rocket pods, effectively the same rocket pods that we've already seen on the Hunter F6. So it's fairly clear here that the Saab Lansen is an airplane that will fit the current meta quite nicely, both as a backup in ground RB when Sweden gets their ground forces tree, and as a fairly decent uh, fighter in air RB, especially considering that it also has a radar system. So now with that said, it's a subsonic, it will be a nice early tier 6. Now we're going to move on to something a little bit faster. The Saab 35 Draken, this aircraft is supersonic, 
fairly significantly supersonic, with early variants able to reach a top speed of 1,900 kilometers per hour. That is almost 200 kilometers an hour faster than the T2. Now that top speed is 1,200 miles per hour, and actually later mods of, the, of this airplane, like later mods of the Draken, could push up to Mach 2, roughly 1,500 miles per hour. So, very good there. Rate of climb, 199 meters per second, almost double of the previous aircraft, the Saab 32. Much, much quicker climb there, and it would be expected from this high-speed looking Delta Wing jet. Now, in terms of armament, you can either have one or two Aiden cannons, 30mm of course, this time with 100 rounds per gun. On the hard points, you can mount a combination of either two 75mm air-to-ground rocket pods or 12 135mm individual rockets on underwing pylons, so that's the sort of air-to-ground capability, all unguided rockets, decent variety. Then, underneath the wings, you can either have two RB-24 missiles, these are basically the sidewinders again, or the RB-27 or the RB-28. These are actually variants of the Falcon air-to-air -air missile. If the Swedish tech tree is added at Gamescom and the Draken is added, we may not see these missiles that early. They may come later. Quite an advanced missile. Will they fit in the current meta? It's debatable. But I think initially we will probably just get the sidewinders, and then later on we will see the Falcons. Now it is worth noting that the Danish variant of the Draken did carry a pair of 1,000 pound bombs. This was to fit up to NATO standards of the time to fit bombs, and the Danish ones did. So again, if Gaijin wants to give it even more air-to-ground capability, they could always say, yeah, the Danish ones used it, so chuck it onto our winning game. So it could also get bombs. So moving on from the Draken to what I think for a while would be the top jet on the Swedish tech tree, at least until the Gripen is added. This is the Saab 37 Viggen, a personal favourite of mine, really just a lovely aeroplane. Reverse thrust, double delta wing configuration, very good range of weaponry, really just an aeroplane that I love. And if within the next year Sweden was added and supersonic jets such as the MiG-21, the F-4 Phantom and later mods of the English Electric Lightning are added, but all of which can go Mach 2 Plus, I think this is very likely to be added. Top speed of Mach 2.1 at an altitude of 11,000 meters, that's around 2,200 kilometers per hour or 1,380 miles per hour, really not a slow jet, it is quick as hell and has a rate of climb of over 200 meters per second. Not only can you go to high altitude, but you will be up there quick if you want to. Now the armament of this aircraft consists of a built-in 30mm KCA cannon with 150 rounds and also 6 hardpoints. On these hardpoints you can mount a variety of weapons, different variants had different things, but Gaijin might just decide to chuck them all into one. For example, the original fighter variant could carry two Skyflash missiles, the RB-71, and the later variant of the fighter could carry four AIM-120 AMRAAM missiles, which both of which might be a bit overpowered for now, it depends how Gaijin decide to advance missile technology in-game. Now, in my opinion, when it is initially added, it will have the more simple missile loadout. You will get your aircraft, and you can either have the six AIM-9 Sidewinders, or the four unguided 135mm rocket pods. So you have ground attack configuration and an air-to-air -air configuration. Six AIM-9 Sidewinders, depends on the variant of course, but the Sidewinder isn't the most effective missile in the game, so I don't think this would be too bad. And it does have a gun, so I think it would be effective either way in Air RB. And another thing to mention is that maritime variants could also carry anti-shipping missiles, such as the RB-4 and the RBS-15, of which could come in handy if we, have, if we ever do see ships move up to higher BRs, although the Saab Viggen would be at a bloody high BR, and ships are lagging quite far behind in that department, so whether it'll actually be useful ever in naval battles, it's up to consideration. But you might be able to use these missiles if they are added in Air RB. Say you have a map with an aircraft carrier or something you need to blow up, you could always go and use them for that. So the addition of Sweden is probably my most preferred option for Gamescom 2019. Whether we'll get it or not, we'll have to wait and see, but it is something I would certainly be very interested to see added into the game. So going to move on to some sort of a bit more brief possibilities that I would like to see. First off, submarines. Had these in the previous April Fools event, of course. They were modern submarines, although the game mode that they had in that event, I would say was quite good, considering that it was probably developed in a fairly short amount of time for a fairly short running event. I would say submarines were quite good in that event, with more development they would have a fair amount of potential, although of course modern submarines in that event 
I do think we would actually just see submarines from World War 1 up to World War 2, similar to the kind of timescales we've been seeing already with the current Navy trees. Now, of course, might see them, might not. It would be a new game mode, new vehicle type possibly that Gaijin could see and sell premiums for, make some more money. Although I think submarines should have their own game mode as in the current state of naval, naval games really, you don't want to add something that will be difficult to counter. Something which can just go and kill people, can't be spotted, difficult to kill. And considering how hard Gaijin have been working to try and improve naval since it's fairly not liked entrance into the game, I don't think they would go and ruin that by adding some impossible to counter type of vehicle. So I think submarines would be good, but only if they have their own mode. Do not add them into naval, it would just give people more reasons not to play it. And finally, tier 7 helis. Now, although I would like bigger and better helis to be added, I do feel this is actually quite unlikely for Gamescom 2019, not only because last year's announcement was also helicopters, but because since then the community's general consensus on helicopters has been very negative. People do not like them, people hate them in Ground RB, and going to your sort of yearly big announcement and saying, hey guys, guess what, we have more helis, I don't think people would like that at all. Uh, of course, it would mean more premiums, tier 6 premium helis. Again, people will complain about people being able to buy in and destroy tank RB for the high tier players. Fair enough, I would say, but um, I would like to see new helis, but I do not think it will be a Gamescom announcement. I think new tech trees, a new heli tree is a possibility for a Gamescom announcement, either Japan, Britain, or Italy. I think Japan being the most likely purely because of the Japanese premium heli added last update, but... Yeah, we're going to have to see. Of course, we could get stuff like the Apache, the Mi-28, the Eurocopter, some of which there have actually been data mine finds for in the 1.89 dev servers, so they seem like they are coming soon, but whether we'll see them or not is still up for debate. And of course, new premiums could be added. Personally, I would like to see the AH-56 built by Lockheed. That would likely be a premium, although I think Gaijin would instead maybe make the American Tier 6 premium the Apache prototype, purely because that will sell more units for Gaijin, in a similar way to the XM-1. So there you go, all the things that I would like to see for Gamescom 2019. I have seen many people actually talking about Mac 2 Plus jets being added, and I would love to see these, and it would make a nice and spicy YouTube title, but I personally feel that it is too early for Mac 2. We've not really had Tier 6 jets in the game that long, and I think a few more updates to really pad out Tier 6 for some nations, it, it's needed first. Uh, in 1.91, I think we will get more Mac 1 Plus jets like the F8 Crusader, but then again, I think Gaijin should wait until they've padded out Tier 6 a bit more, given us a lot more Mac 1 Plus jets before they go to Mac 2 Plus, because otherwise certain nations will be at a major disadvantage, and it really wouldn't help whatever balance is still left in jet games. It would just get rid of that completely, and I really don't think that's something Gaijin should do. Of course, it would be nice, go to Gamescom, hey guys, we've got a Mac 2 Plus, great stuff, but really last update, the development of Supersonics was very limited. So I really do think that we're going to have to wait at least a few more updates just to sort of let some nations catch up before we go and jump into Mac 2 Plus. Anyway though, thanks a lot for watching the video. There has been my thoughts on what I would like to see for Gamescom 2019. Let me know in the comments what you would like to see. Uh, do consider liking the video if you like what I spoke about. If not, fair enough. Uh, do also consider please subscribing to the channel. That would be very much appreciated. Thanks again for watching. And I will see you in the next one.